So, uh, what is biocatalysis? Biocatalysis is a pathway for greener chemical synthesis in which enzymes or whole cells are used as catalysts in reactions. Some of the improvements of biocatalyzed reactions compared to traditional chemocatalyzed reactions are increased atom economy, decreased E factor, reduction of waste, reduction of energy usage, and a these reactions are mostly performed in water under mild temperature and pressure conditions, which reduces the use of reagents and energy. The high selectivity of biocatalysts mean that specific enantiomers can be selected for without the addition of protecting groups, overall increasing product yield and decreasing waste. Some applications of biocatalysis include the synthesis of pharmaceuticals like vitamin C, citagliptin and pregabalin. What's pregabalin? Pregabalin treats neuropathic disorders that can be caused by deficiency in GABA, which is gamma aminobutyric acid. This is invaluable in maintaining the balance between excitation and inhibition. GABA cannot be directly administered because it cannot cross the blood-brain barrier at low dosages, and at high dosages it is toxic. For this reason, indirect devices must be used to increase the GABA concentration. Pregabalin does this by binding to a subunit which increase L-glutamic acid decarboxylase GAD levels. Because GAD synthesizes GABA, this leads to an increased GABA concentration. This application means that pregabalin has social utility and commercial promise. The first generation synthesis, which is both wasteful and hazardous, involved isolating the cyanodiester starting material, known as 2-carboxyethyl-3-cyano-5-methyl-hexanoic acid ethyl ester, or better known as CNDE. Isovaloaldehyde undergoes no novenagel condensation, which is nucleophilic addition by the ester, eliminating water, and is then followed by cyanation. CNDE undergoes basic hydrolysis, then nickel-catalyzed hydrogenation. The resulting amino acid is a racemic mixture, the S enantiomer of which is the active pregabalin compound, the R enantiomer of which is inactive and waste. This mixture is then racemized by using a stoichiometric amount of mandelic acid and recrystallization in THF. Yields of 20% are reported. What are some problems with this synthesis? This process was problematic due to its wastage and use of hazardous substances. It only produced 20% yields and did not recycle the unwanted enantiomer. Moreover, organic solvents were used as well as toxic auxiliary substances like mandelic acid. The issues of waste and hazards rendered the first generation process commercially and environmentally unsuitable, primarily prompted by the cost, but with the favourable externality of improving greenness. Research successfully found a set of second-generation reactions that ameliorated these issues. Pfizer, alternatively known as PFIZA, identified the resolution of racemic CNDE as a step could be better done by an enzyme, as many enzymes have excellent enantioselectivity. Lipolase, which is a commercially available lipase from the Thermomyces lanuginosis fungus species, showed good results and was selected for further development. Racemic CNDE with a high substrate loading was enantioselectively hydrolyzed with lipolase to form the non-polar R enantiomer and the desired polar S monoacid. The difference in polarity allowed the R enantiomer to be separated and recycled to CNDE, which is the starting material. This left the desired S enantiomer, which in water becomes CNE, then undergoes basic hydrolysis and nickel catalyzed hydrogenation forming pregabalin in 40% yield after only one recycle. Was this motivated by the will to find a greener alternative? While we would hope that the need to be green would motivate change on its own, realistically, the driver had been reducing the cost of production and therefore increasing profits. The fact that the cheaper process is green could be cynically judged a coincidence or perhaps more realistically, a secondary intention born out of a moral care, but also the positive image associated with green companies that in turn aids profitability. The biocatalyzed synthesis of pregabalin minimizes the traditional first generation synthesis issue of wastage and hazards. Improvements in second generation synthesis are in waste prevention and increased safety.
there are five times less inputs because we are able to racemize and reuse the unwanted iron antimony, and we are able to completely eliminate the use of mandelic acid. Wow! The total input decreased from 57,920 to 11,681.5 kilograms. Solvent use was decreased eight times because all chemical reactions are now conducted in water, which reduces the E factor from 86 to 17 and minimizes the use of toxic reactants. Incredible! Does the synthesis meet the 12 principles of green chemistry? I think so. Let's take a look. This principle of green chemistry is that the process reduces waste. This reaction significantly reduces raw materials and solvent. That's right. The E factor is reduced to 17. But there is water waste. Yeah, that isn't included in the E factor. The second principle of green chemistry is that materials are maximized into the final product. Mm -hmm. This reaction recycles the unwanted enantiomer. That's cool as. The third principle is to use and generate compounds with less toxicity. There is a massive decrease in use of solvents. And no more use of toxic mandelic acid as a reagent. But what about the use of potassium hydroxide? It is still used in the final step and can be harmful. The fourth principle is to design benign chemicals. This doesn't really apply here. The fifth principle is to minimize the use of auxiliaries. Just like a third principle, most auxiliary substances are replaced with water. But nickel reduction and potassium hydroxide hydrolysis still remain. The sixth principle is to minimize energy requirements. And there is a reduction of 83% by using the enzyme as a catalyst. The seventh principle is to use renewable materials. And the catalyst is renewable. The eighth principle is to reduce derivatives. The amount of CNDE derived is reduced by recycling the RCNDE. The ninth principle is to use catalysts. Obviously a catalyst is used here. This principle is designed for degradation. This process isn't really focused on this principle. The eleventh principle is real-time pollution prevention. Reactions are monitored in real-time and some wastewater is sent directly to waste treatment. The twelfth principle is safer chemistry. Water is used as a reaction here. 